The Creative Family Counseling Center has a motto that guides its therapist work, helping home be a happier place. We are a group practice in Louisville, Kentucky and in Prospect, Kentucky that specializes in helping turn homes of chaos into homes of happiness and healing. We are mostly marriage and family therapists, which is a systemic model of therapy, which means we're treating the entire family when we're treating a child. Or we're treating the entire family when we're treating a young adult. Or we're working with the entire family when we're working with a couple or even an individual adult. It's an important undertaking at any time but perhaps especially so during the last two years. Prior to the pandemic, there was a strong emphasis on providing support to parents already. But during the pandemic, the need for that support for parents really increased. The only problem with providing that support for not just parents, but the whole family during the early part of 2020, everyone at Creative Family Counseling was also having to adjust to the sudden and shocking onset of COVID-19. And as a supervisor, I didn't have the answers, Suddenly, I was canceling all of my appointments because, you know, things were shutting down and um, schools were shutting down and all of these things. And so people weren't really quite sure what to do yet. Rebecca Street is the practice manager at the Linden location. She's also a therapist who practices attachment-based family therapy, which she explains is an evidence-based treatment for adolescents and adults and one of the few effective treatments for preventing suicide attempts. It is a really difficult model to practice via telehealth because so much of the energy of what you're working with happens in the room. But there was little research on just how to make that adjustment. There's less guidance and material out there, I think, for those methods of therapy being provided via telehealth. And so we've been doing a lot of learning on our feet in the last year in terms of how do we engage the entire family in treatment when there is one device that can get on the internet and we're trying to like you know, angle the phone or whatever it is so we can see everyone. And many of the traditional tools that therapists at Creative Family Counseling used were no longer at their fingertips. Primarily, we were working individually with the child in the playroom for a good length of time, developing coping skills, helping them identify and learn emotions, um, finding ways to solve problems, increasing self-esteem, all through play. It was a challenge that even limited the use of the organization's certified therapy dogs Lola, Archer, and Nugget. If you take time to read how each of the dogs can help, which we did, it ranges from providing a calming presence to clients who may feel anxious about coming to therapy, to helping people stay grounded when they discuss strong feelings or painful memories. And for the record, Nugget will quote, make appearances on screen with telehealth, something therapists themselves across the country were at times struggling with how to manage. I think a lot of it is that, by and large, the types of intelligences between being technology competent and being an, a gifted therapist don't often overlap. And so I think it's not a comfort zone for a lot of people that work in our profession. Even the people that provide trainings have had to learn how to deliver those in new ways, and we've had to learn how to deliver therapy in new ways. Adding to the confusion, each state approached the issue of providing therapy via telehealth differently. For Kentucky therapists, they were required to take 15 hours of telehealth training. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was a big rush to figure out how I could get that training so that I could support the families that I was working with. And we were hearing from our board that, no, you really do need to have this training and you have to take it before you can offer telehealth. So we are scrambling for most of the month of March, I would say, to figure out how we were gonna provide services. And we had to invest in the time and energy and resources to upgrade all of our platforms. We also had to get trained in providing telehealth services. That investment was necessary because prior to the pandemic, Creative Family Counseling did not offer telehealth services instead opting for all in-person treatments. Because I felt very strongly that the magic of what we do with working with families and children and teens, that, that happens in person in our play therapy rooms where we have access to all the toys and games and art supplies and all the fun. Lacey Ryan, who's the founding director of Creative Family Counseling, says if there's a silver lining to the pandemic for her, it says she's been able to add telehealth to her therapist toolkit. It took a good couple of months for us to really feel a bit more grounded in opening up a telehealth platform, putting all of our resources together, uh, creating Google Docs that we could share with one another if we're shifting the entire way that we interact with a family. 
let's all pull together and help each other as we learn this new model. Maybe it has some limitations, but I was forced to learn some new ways to provide support and services, and I was able to do that. Part of making that adjustment meant thinking of how to better utilize telehealth. We were able to find some virtual play therapy resources, virtual sand tray, um, that we could continue to try to provide as much intervention as we could, but from a distance. Other times I would have my puppet on screen with me. We would be having playful inter um, interventions and activities across the screen with one another. But with school shifting to remote learning and so many other things moving to online platforms, it was clear that the therapist also needed to consider how much screen time kids were already getting and how to help parents cope with it all. We would spend 15 to 20 minutes with the child and then shifting over to providing parent support and, and having a big emphasis on how to support the parents during that time. Parents were pulling triple duty. I'm parent, I'm teacher, and I'm employee. And all of that's happening at home. That was just impossible. It's, it's impossible for someone to manage all of that. Then, just as the therapists at Creative Family Counseling were getting a handle on using telehealth to help their clients, there was another shift. Maybe in June or July, that's when the effects of the pandemic really started to show themselves for the children. And that's when our phone just started ringing off the hook. It was in mid-2020 that therapists were just beginning to see the true mental health implications of the pandemic. Children were experiencing extreme anxiety and panic, extreme separation anxiety. Some of them have experienced trauma over the course of the pandemic. Some entire families have experienced trauma. I think part of it is that in the mental health disciplines, we witness the pandemic happening at a different rate than in the physical health disciplines in terms of when we were seeing people get sick. And so we, there have been different waves that of um, distress that have peaked over time at different points and it hasn't necessarily always coincided with when cases were the highest. Both Street and Ryan add that the long haul effects of COVID will not be known for years to come, especially on this generation of children. Teenagers developmentally are supposed to be like separating from their parents and developing their own interests and really developing their own sense of self. And it's really hard to do that when you are locked in a house with your parents for two years. I've ushered a couple kids into college through all of this and watching their process be very different than kids before them and how they've managed that. The good news during this troubling time was that telehealth allowed creative family counseling to reach more people. We're available to families across the entire state of Kentucky now. And for those clinicians who are licensed in Kentucky and Indiana, then our reach extends across Indiana as well. It's good and bad. You know, the, some of the kids in, in rural areas still struggle with access because of, you know, low bandwidth or they don't have the devices that they need and those kinds of things. And so there have been some limitations, but I would say all in all, I've had more kids get access to services than, than were unable to access services than ever before. The therapists say they also learned that telehealth can help them connect with those who often find themselves being treated like outsiders in their own communities or simply are too afraid to try therapy. We've also found that there are some middle schoolers, teenagers, and, and college age kids, that kind of you know eight year gap of, uh, or eight year range of people who prefer telehealth. They like being on screen. It feels safer to not be so close and up close with someone and be vulnerable that it feels a little safer to be vulnerable across the screen. For some people in our communities, like disabled people, the pandemic didn't change much in terms of how separated and segregated they were from their community to begin with. Something both Street and Ryan say they are hopeful will change as we find new ways to interact with each other and those who are both alike and different from us. This has really shown us how much we really do need each other and how important community is for our physical and mental health and how being separated from one another really has been distressing to people because we really are social creatures and we need other people and being separated from each other doesn't work long term.